Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Welcome to another edition of the Friday, the Twinkle Tips Friday videos. We have something very special for you guys today because tag, you're it. Welcome back folks. So today it's Friday and I have to get on the road but I need to get this video recorded before I head out to Light Up Ohio. Um, so I have I have a, an idea, something that we talked about a week ago or so in x uh in our Zoom room, our Tuesday night Zoom rooms, which you are all welcome to uh, join us. It's a free open event. It doesn't matter if you're a PPD club member, you can join us. We have a great time. There's wonderful fellowship. Usually every Tuesday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, you're welcome to join us. Uh, some weeks it's a webinar. Next week it will be a uh, open mic night. And we were discussing uh, how to organize your layout or make it easier to map sequences. And, um, well, the, the topic came up as to exactly what some functions are in the layout tab whenever it came to groups. All right. Let's begin by just taking a second to look over this screen that you see right here, okay? This screen here is the Layout tab. Now, there are a few little functions in x Lights that have been added. I couldn't even tell you when these were added. I, I really never paid much attention to them until one day somebody said something about it. And I always wondered, what could I do with this thing? Well, I figured it out. And uh, it's kind of helped me, but it's only helped me because I understand how X Lights work. So I'm going to try my best to explain this to you logically so that you can take the time to set this up for yourself. And it may help you potentially in your sequence mappings. And it doesn't have to be just about how we do things here at PPD, but it could also be about some of the other vendors that you do uh, mapping sequences from. Everybody has their own way that they build their layout. And I'm showing you ours, but you can apply this lesson across the board. So let's get started. And I'm going to click on this, this group. Now, if you're familiar with how uh, uh, vendors set up their uh, layouts and sequences and so forth, what they'll do is they'll group things together. I call these logical groups. Uh, you know, a, a logical group is a, uh, candy canes or it's arches or it's mini trees. It's logical to put those individual things into one group and call it the, the main name of the item. Mini trees. It's a mini tree group. We also build other groups and some of those other groups in our case we use a nested group and some people will tell you don't use nested groups because that's against the law. It's illegal. It's bad. No. No, it's not. It's fine. We've been doing this for six or seven years. And let me tell you, it's super easy to create these groups. Now, on the screen for the Layout tab, you see that we have these groups listed. And from this group list, you click on these individually. And if you click on these individually, you'll see that there is this tag color here. Over, over there, uh, it, it, it's, it shows that the tag color here is black. And what I want to uh, preface this with is, we had no idea what this was really actually going to be used for. Um, and it just was always there until I started playing around with it and I realized that, oh, hey, um, if you open up a sequence, and let's do that. If you open up a sequence and uh, we just look at the layout or the, the, the sequence screen, you'll notice that, oh, look at these little blocks here. They're all set, situated in colors. But if we go to our master view and we look at the all house, you don't see a block there that is black because, well, this happens to be black. Um, and I thought, initially, I thought maybe this meant that this was an AC prop, but it's not. It's actually the group level that has these blocks. Now, if you can tell where I'm going with this video already, you're, you're, you may be 10 steps ahead of me. Maybe you don't need to watch the rest of the video. But what I decided to do was I decided to label everything in my, uh, in my entire layout uh, with a color that coordinated to where it's located in, in the show. So I went back and I looked at these tags and I assigned these tags 
The only ones I didn't assign were the top level groups, the all house, the all display, the all yard, because those sit, quite frankly, at the top of your uh, master view. And so what I did was I went to every logical group. I went to the arches group and I said, okay, arches, what color should I tag these? Well, just for simplification, I tagged them the color red. The regular color red, the, the numerical value of 255 red. And if, if you go in, you can click on the box here and I selected the full red color. See how it says 255, zero and zero there? That's the base level red color. And so I've selected that and I said, you know what? I'm gonna use that base level color red for any group that is on the ground. Now, that may make sense, that may not make sense, but that's just what I did. So I said, I'm gonna put all of my arches, I'm gonna put the arches on red, I'm gonna to go to the candy canes, those happen to be on the ground, and I'm gonna put those in the, in. Uh, I'm gonna give them a red tag. I did the exact same thing with uh, another group, let's see, stars on trees, right there. I did the same thing with the stars on trees, and then I did the same thing with the uh, pixel pole stars. So where's those at? Pixel pole stars right here. So there you see, I've, I've taken the time and I've given them a solid color. Now the next thing that I did was I, I decided, okay, well, if it's on the yard, then I'm gonna give it this red tag. If it's on the house, what color tag do I give it? Well, so I decided on blue. And so if we, we click on, let's say, let's say, well, the snowflakes are right here. We'll go ahead and click on the snowflakes. You'll see, hey, look, I used blue. Blue is the 255 number. So it's zero red, zero green, and blue is 255 here, which is this blue selection. And that's the tag that I gave them. Well, there's something a little bit strange and different about our snowflakes than there really is about uh, most of the yard props. And you might recognize this as you go along, but the snowflakes have a lot of submodel groups in them, as at least in our layout they do. If I've got snowflakes as the base color blue, what about all my snowflake submodels? Well, that's whenever I decided I'm gonna take a variant, a variant of the blue. And in this instance, I used uh, what's called cyan or turquoise. I call it turquoise. I could be wrong, it, it is what it is, but um, I use this blue color. Now, you'll notice that it's zero red, it's 255 green and 255 blue. So the color doesn't matter. It was just a lighter color or the same color, but only a little different. So what it told me, what I did was I went through and I made all of my submodels for my snowflakes that turquoise color. So here you see spinner alert, Oh wait, those are turquoise too. Well, so I decided any submodel on the entire house, on the house, not the yard, but the house, was going to have this light blue. Now, granted, I, I, after doing this, I realized that I have no submodels in my yard props. Now, it doesn't mean I'm gonna add more, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't add more, but it makes it way easier when we go over to our display elements tab and we look at in our sequencer, you can see that you can sort your props in a very specific manner. Now, if we look here, this is how our display elements is set up. We can open up the display elements box here, and you can see right beside me, uh, you can see here across this entire list here, this is the list that we're looking at directly. Now, we have set up this, this is our master view and you will want to take time to create a master view in your layout with your groups that are aligned this way if you're mapping one of our sequences. What this does is this aligns all the effects. It puts the effects in a hierarchical order and when that hierarchical order is followed, then you have way better results where the, the map sequence looks more similar to what is on our layout versus when you map it in. So that's the goal. So if you know how we set up our layout, that's what these tag colors are doing for us. They're, they're kind of pre-sorting these different colors just so that we can see if they're in the right place. Now, the way I built our layout, we have the all display at the top, we have the all house, the all yard, the all house decorations, and the all stars. Those all have the black tags. We put all of those at the top. The only exception is, is I put the all roof down here, which is real close to all of the roof groups. You see where it says roof, uh, roof lower, roof upper, icicles and gutters, and the yard border. 
you see those individual groups, but then you also see at the top the all roof group, which is a black uh, tag. That black tag could be up here at the top. It's not going to matter because all of your base groups, your main logical groups, are listed directly below the master main group or the master group of all roof, the all roof stuff. Now, if we break this down, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. You'll notice that I have all the red stuff up here at the top, except for the floods. The floods are on the house. I've always always kept the floods up at the top. Whenever I sequence floodlights, those floodlights are always independent of the whole house, all display. They're, they're, they only get effects on the floodlight group, period. I never, I never included them in the all house. And if I want them to come on with the all house or the all display, I just turn them on with those. So um, I never, I never, that's why those are there. I, I've never moved them. And then again, um, the second thing that you're going to see immediately is whenever you look at, let's say, the windows and doors, you can see other verticals. Well, other verticals is the lighter blue, and you can see the darker blue color, where the darker blue is up above, but the lighter blue is down below. In X lights, when we apply an effect to the submodel group and the main group, the logical group is above the submodels, as you see here in the screen, then the effects on the submodel group down below are always going to take precedence. They're going to be the front and center over whatever is in the main group that's above them. So this way you can sequence on the submodel level and overlay that on top of whatever you're doing on the main group. And it's a way to do layering and sequencing that, um, quite frankly, is very beneficial. But if you don't know this ahead of time, then it's really hard for you to kind of get things set up. Um, so what we've done is we've just basically done the exact same thing. If you come down here, you can see the snowflakes, and that's our main logical group. And then we have two, uh, two or three, three or four other groups. We have a snowflakes large group. The snowflakes large group is a group of snowflakes that's just like your large high density the giant the big snowflakes if you will and those big snowflakes you know they can they can do some so much more because they have great submodels in them and so forth not that the little ones don't but there might be a little bit more action and a more a, a lot more that you can do and so we put those right below nestle it right below the main logical group so if we want to sequence on the snowflakes the big ones we can do that because it's going to overtake what's on top of it, which is the regular snowflake group. So I can sequence on just the big snowflakes, or I can sequence on the main group of snowflakes with everything in it. So the other thing is, is that now we have these other three groups, which are snowflake arms, rings, and tips. You can see those have that light blue tag, and you can physically see that they're in a specific order. Uh, I could actually come in here and change the snowflake large. If I go back over here, I could make this as maybe like a blue, but a less darker, but more, uh, but not as bright blue. So if we go to the snowflakes large, I could come in here. I could change this color to a much darker blue. Let's say, let's say it's this blue here. Maybe it's lighter than this, but it's just different. And if we go ahead and click save, uh, bam, you can see here on the main line that oh look we've just changed our snowflake color so it's so the snowflakes are still the main one but the next one down would be like a subgroup and then we have our submodel groups and then you you can visually see what is going on within your layout now if you take the time to do this amongst all of your models that are in your layout let's say you have a lot of submodels let's say you have candy cane submodels if you were to build a candy cane submodel group, you would be able to look and see like the solid red, the base red, and then you could give the candy cane submodels. Maybe it's an outline or maybe it's stripes that you create. That's up to you. But you could give that another group name as candy cane submodel X and give it a tag color that is just lighter than that red and it allows you to quickly see it here in your layout master view which allows you to quickly put them in order whenever you come over here to your um, to your setup and organize them so that they're in order with whatever sequencer you are mapping or importing your sequences from. And there you have it guys. Uh, I hope that this video was a little bit informative. I hope you learned something. You, you can tell when people take their time to set up their master view 
and you can see the differences whenever you actually implement some of the small pieces that we talked about today especially with tags tags really help you visually see right there on the right side of the page they visually you can see where something is on the list and if you tag it correctly or I, I mean I don't want to call it correctly it's not correct it's just if you have a system and you keep up with that system in a way that will allow you to get the best results upon your mapping of sequences from different vendors or from us, then you're going to have nothing but the best quality of sequence whenever you turn around, import your and map the sequence, and run it on your show for your holiday season. So guys, that's everything from me this week here at Pixel Pro Displays. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button straight, right, down, right there down below me. And then there's also the bell for notifications so you never miss any of the videos that we put out on a weekly, monthly, or bi-weekly, or every other day basis. It doesn't matter. We always are doing something here at Pixel Pro Displays, and we hope that you enjoy and appreciate the things that we bring along to you. And if you do, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club, where you get one awesome sequence each and every month, brand new to the store, specially sequenced, high detail just for you and your family and your community. You get a choice of three each month, and we change them out every month. It's a great deal. It's an awesome way to get through the holiday season and not stress out about having to learn how to sequence and do all of the hard stuff that we put ourselves through in order to create some of the best masterpieces that we've ever devised. Guys, thanks for joining us again. If you want cool shirts just like this one, check them out on pixelprodisplays.com. Go to the store and click on gear. You'll find yourself two t-shirts that match what we have and hopefully, hopefully you'd enjoy having those as well. Guys, thank you for joining us. We'll see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now. But they're not in any group other than the flood group. So I sequence whenever I sequence. Whenever I sequence.